Welcome um, and good evening. Uh, tonight's guest is Philipp Staat from Avilox and he's joining us tonight from Leipzig and he will tell us something about how to hack remote work. Uh, and as far as I understood it, it, the presentation that we are seeing tonight is uh, the result of a federal research project uh, about remote work and uh, digital tools in remote work. So with, with that, without further ado, over to you, Philip, and I will just disappear and see you on the other side. Perfect. Thank you very much for the introduction, Jörg. And also thank you very much for like organizing um, this whole thing like incredibly professionally. It's like I had so much information about what's going on and how the whole thing is being prepared. Uh, it was just like um, really impressive. So thank you. Thank you a lot. And yeah, let's get right into the topic. So um, yeah, before I uh, dive into the content, uh, I just want to introduce myself um, very quickly. Like uh, Jörg already gave you like the big picture of what's happening today. And yeah, I'm uh, Philipp Stadt. I'm working at um, Avalox as a consultant. And um, what, I, what I do there, I do facilitate and consult on, on human-centered digital and organizational transformations. So, um, yeah, we, we are um, working on, on, on digital transformations. Like, that's really, like, one of our core things. But we focus more on the, on the humans than on the technology side. Um, I am, though, like an like a Atlassian fan at heart. I actually put on my... Teams in Space shirt today for this uh, webinar, um, which I'm very proud of. Um, we got it at a at a mastery camp in, in Amsterdam at some point in a in a future uh, in, a, in a previous life. And um, yeah, I'm so I'm I'm always like I, I I'm always a little more um, driven by the technology side as well. But yeah, we put the put the humans um, first. Um, in, the, in, the, in the stuff we do. Um, what does Avalox do? It's like a, it's a big bubble. I, I let, leave this there for you to, to read it by yourself. I don't want to go through every point. But what is very important on the, uh, on the topic of today is that um, virtual first is in our DNA. So Avalox was founded um, over six years ago and we never had an office and we've always collaborated virtually um, because we are not necessarily co-located even if you look at the at the map where we are located so we have a uh, colleagues all over germany and um like from the very start of Avalox, we tried to work um virtually with our clients as well um it's not like always um what like how we collaborate we we meet them of course as well but we try to move as much as possible into the uh, virtual room if you um like the webinar or if you have any questions later on just feel free to connect with me yeah and that's all about me i just want to connect to uh, what jörg already said um um, at Avalox, we are part of the research project Digitale Teams. It's a um, federally funded um, research project about virtual collaboration in Germany. And um, the, the goal of the whole project is to provide um, a platform um, for digital teams in Germany to uh, work better together. The, the platform itself is like um, a huge technical solution. Uh, with a lot of integrations, so um, we don't know yet if there will be an Atlassian, uh, there, if there will be Atlassian integrations uh, right from the start, but we are working on it. Um, but also the platform um, is there to share concepts about um, um, working better together, about cultural change, about methods and practices. And so it's, it's, it's a combination of all of that. And some of the research conducted um, within the research project I'm going to uh, present here today. Yeah, so let's dive in. What is a digital team? Let's ask that question first. It's actually not as trivial as you might think it is. So a team is a group of people which is larger than two um, 
with common objectives, very important. So like if you have a group of people who actually don't have common objectives, they're not a team, they're a group of people. Um, that's very important because then you, if you, if you have any issues to, to solve or if you any, if you, if there's any, anything you need to fix, if you have to f the feeling you need to fix something about the, the collaboration in that group, you need to address it completely differently as if they were a team. And also very important, the team, um, within the team, the, um, the people benefit from collaboration with each other. So it's not just people who have common objectives, they actually benefit from collaborating. Um, they are not, might not even be able to accomplish their objective without collaboration. Now let's have a look at um, what are actually the reasons of working together virtually and distributed. So there's a lot of good reasons. Um, the obvious one is social distancing, like everybody experienced that in the past uh, months. And um, yeah, but there's um, a lot more reasons. So um, you can be more flexible if you and your team work together uh, virtually and uh, in a distributed way. You don't need to, like if you, you don't need to travel everywhere, you don't need to um, commute um, so you, you'll be able to save a lot of time. And um, actually, like if your whole organization is working virtually, um, the saved commuting time and effort really contributes to, uh, has like a ecological impact. Um, you'll be able to recruit easier. Um, if you don't need to worry about where your uh, colleagues are from, you can recruit from anywhere, basically. Um, time zone might be a consideration, but um, time zone also for like German time zones, for example, means you could hire somebody um, living in Italy or in Scandinavia or um, somewhere in Africa. And um, that, that wouldn't be any, an issue necessarily. Um, generally, like if you want to improve your work life flow, um, working together in a distributed team um, is, is very often like a baseline um, because if you, for example, want to um, work, bring your children to school and um, work and uh, pick them up from school and then uh, work later in the evening, that's just really not working if you need to go to the office um, in between. Um, the, and there is, um, quite some challenges though, in, um, working together in a, um, digital team and, um, yeah, what we found out, um, in the research project is that you kind of need to bridge, um, certain distances. So um, there's obviously a spatial distance, so you can't work together with physical items. Like if you um, need to um, work, um, you know, with like on, on a whiteboard, uh, that's just not working. Um, and, um, but there's also uh, three more distances uh, that we found out. So there is a um, collaborative distance. Um, you need to, um, when you work together with other um, uh, people, you need to um, kind of bridge that distance. You need different tools to collaborate. Um, for example, Atlassian tools, um, um, Jira to, to work together in, um, on your projects or on your tasks. Um, or uh, um, Bitbucket to um, um, develop together, to write code together, to review it. Um, but you also need new methods and tools and practices because you can't just sit next to each other and uh, work on something. Then there's also a cultural distance. Um, you don't um, if you're not in the same room, it's very hard for you, for everybody, or it's way harder for everybody to understand each other and, and their background and, and like what um, moves them 
there's like um there's a like an a term for this which is called osmotic communication so when you're in a co-located within one room you hear what other people say you um listen to them and um they um um th this information also not just professional information is just kind of lost um between in, in the digital space and then there's the interpersonal distance um so you don't um you don't have these um what they call coffee kitchen um moments um you um you don't run into your colleagues you don't have these um exchanges about their family and their their what they do besides the job that's also a distance which needs to be bridged so when you um want to uh, figure out um what you need to do first you need to know where you want to go and from where so you need to uh, be you'll, you'll be able to figure out how far you need to travel and um in the whole um there's a whole bandwidth of like remote uh, scenarios so right now a lot of people are working 100% um and a lot of knowledge workers are working 100% in the remote and 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 uh, virtually but um the question is just where do you want to be in a couple of years like just imagine the that we <laughs> are able to fix the whole corona thing or find a solution how to handle it and where do you want to be after this because that's really like pointing you to what you need to do to um establish a sustainable way in remote work and so there's um there's like of course we occasionally work in the home office i think especially when we're talking about the atlassian community like it people working in the it or um knowledge workers there will be rarely any company after um 2020 who will not allow their employees to occasionally work in the remote home office um there's something like um, everybody can work remotely as much as they want and the people do that very frequently. And then there might be something like um, we are distributed regionally and we see each other about um, once a month face to face and we can't see each other more often because it actually has a lot of effort to involve to see each other. And digital collaboration is basically our DNA. And then there's, of course, companies who will, um, and like there's companies like that already. Um, Atlassian just announced last week that people don't need to return to the office if they don't want. Um, so that they are distributed internationally and they see each other uh, face to face like once every year max. And they need to be able to achieve everything in distributed collaboration. And in this whole bandwidth from like we are distributed internationally and we cannot see each other, um, even if it's important, if we didn't schedule that meeting um, way ahead. Um, and on the other hand side, there's like we occasionally work in the home office. There's like a whole bandwidth and you just need to figure out um, where you are right now and where you want to go. And then you can figure out what you need to do about that. So, um, yeah, um, for example, you could just ask yourself, where, where do you wish to be in 2023? Right now, it's very hard to, to look into the future, but um, just like try to give this a shot, try to think about it and try to um, imagine like there is a world which can handle Corona and how does work look for you, for your team, for your company? And then you can figure out what equipment, what skills you need for your trip. Now you can figure out the tools you need. You can figure out the methods and the practices you need. You can um, um, you understand what people, what kind of knowledge they need to gather, what kind of experiences they need to make, what kind of stuff you need to experiment with. That's, that's all the stuff you, you can figure out when you know where you want to go. There's some um, 
some meta concepts uh, for the whole trip, um, which I want to share with you. So um, very important is to accept that there is no um, template for this. So there's really no template which you can download from the internet and where you, where you can learn or see how to achieve uh, like a sustainable digital um, collaboration within your company. So um, we have made very good experiences and that's also what we learned in the research project that a lot of companies tackle this in an agile way. So they make a plan very small plan very they, it's 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 just a little more than an idea and a, and a, and an idea how to to go the next step then they do something they do they do move towards that idea and they check if it's working or if it's not working and then they finally um act and um it like adjust the plan like in in a cycle in a continuous cycle so be curious um, experiment, uh, what is safe enough to try, it should be your guiding principle. Yeah. If you have a idea for a solution, what keeps you, why shouldn't you try it? Why shouldn't you just try it? If it's safe enough to try, if the risks are, um, containable, if you can manage them, um, just experiment, um, then listen to feedback. Um, learn, learn based on your own experiences. So it's it's very hard um, to it's 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 very hard. I know to not just like download a, a template or a playbook, but it's really important to to pursue your own way and work with what you have and what the people need, and then just trust the learning process. Is, is really the last point. Um, you'll like this process will, will get you there. You will, you'll learn along the way, you'll develop methods and tools and um, they will be tailored to you and your needs and, um, and then you get there. So um, that's actually like a, a real solution, like something I absolutely recommend every team um, or maybe even every organization. Um, it doesn't really, it's not even, um, restricted to remote teams, but it's even more important for remote teams that you just um, continuously uh, write down your learnings and especially what you've agreed upon. Like if you have agreed upon to um, file, do file sharing in a certain way to, uh, to certain principles in meetings, you know, like, um, Everybody, like in a virtual meeting, everybody should make the time and the space to be 100% in the meeting, not do anything, any parallel work. Stuff like this could be an agreement you made that you collect these agreements and uh, put them into um, an overview, like a repository of your agreements. And um, yeah, they, they should be your guiding principles um, in a remote environment. And um, it's also really helpful for onboarding. If you have like one document where all the important stuff, this is basically how we work together um, for onboarding new team members or even sometimes for working with um, external partners. There is some, some um, aspects which are very common and which I now wanna discuss with you um, together, I brought some um, some my some of my own stories for all of these aspects and like um, uh, digital collaboration and some stories and um, yeah, um, I want to deep dive here a little bit too. Um, so we we leave the meta level and go into the details. Um, slide thirteen. So an overarching obstacle in, for digital teams is modern leadership because um, and like the biggest thing here really is that uh, leadership is not only conducted by leaders anymore, uh, but increasingly by everybody in the team. 
Um, for remote teams, there is one aspect of uh, command and control which really doesn't work anymore. So you can't really manage the workday um, of your employees or of your team members anymore. Like they need to be responsible for themselves and for their time management because you're just not, this is just something which really doesn't work if you're not uh, co-located. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't mean really works well in co-location, but um, like everybody has more um, has more power over their own schedule and, and needs to also um, keep themselves focused and, and and like the working environment is kind of under the control of everybody. There's just really there's naturally more distributed leadership. Um, then there's um, it's very important for digital teams to facilitate a sense of belonging. Um, it's it's really 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 important to um, to put a lot of room and effort into this, and I have a really fun story. So um, I worked at a, a company once, um, and we used the the app, the Confluence app, Karma, um, and you could basically give each other medals and um, kind of um, appreciate um, like support you receive from your colleague it's kind of like if you also use microsoft 365 it's kind of like praise um but it really helped from my perception as a member um of a distributed team in that company to just um have create these nice like little appreciative moments you sometimes have in the office when somebody just tells you you've done well like when you receive that medal um, for like supporting somebody, it, it just really felt nice and it kind of made your day. It was something I really um, was looking forward. Um, you keep track of the important information. Um, it's also very, very important in, in distributed collaboration. Um, usually um, people are working with a lot of tools and it's very, very hard to um, figure out exactly what are all my tasks, what are all my, um, what are all my, um, the things I need to do today. And especially if you work together with partners where you have like se separate um, instances of um, like task management software or even different task management software, it's really, really hard to keep track of that. And um, I made a really, um, also a really good experience there that um, in combination with like a team agreement um, that you just at one, at one point, like in, in this team where I worked at, everybody was just super overwhelmed and like the, even the most organized people just couldn't, um, yeah, they couldn't, um, manage all their tasks anymore because it was so fragmented. There was also like um, collaboration with several clients involved who like put in tasks at at different places and um, in, a, in a different Jira instances. And um, so like the, the agreement to put all, all tasks, even from different, like in, there was some different projects to put them um, in, a, in, a, in a JIRA board and agree on some terms, how these tasks, what information needed to, uh, they needed to contain, um, just really helped, helped there. And it was also like one of these like moments where you just felt uh, very great about um, what, um, how, how this like conversation just um, improved everybody's life. Um, then the task of communicate clearly also it just sounds like very obvious, but it, it really isn't. It's like the, um, the amount of information which is transported by communication um, in the, in, for example, in text is just so much lower in comparison to the information which is transported if you have um, video and audio as well. And the um, but digital uh, digital communication usually is 
asynchronous as we've heard. So you, you usually don't have this like live situation where you can just interact seamlessly with each other. So um, using more video and audio content um, might seem strange to some people like just, you know, like you actually just want to tell your colleague something, um, but instead of writing like a very long mail, you might consider just taping a video and send it to him. Um, I mean, like a lot of people communicate in their private lives, like via voice messages on WhatsApp. And there's really like an advantage of doing that in a business context too, because you just, you, you um, accept um, additionally to like transporting the words, you also transport the mute mood of your voice. And if you tape a, tape a video, you will just also send over mimics and, and gestics and give your, the person um, um, more information. Then the equipment for productive virtual and distributed work um, seems very obvious, but it isn't. So um, if you um, move towards virtual collaboration, um, everybody, for example, almost like almost everybody will need like a second screen. Everybody will need um, like an external keyboard, maybe like a special um, table um, to sit at home or like a special chair and um, it's it's really just something we see out there that that just this just doesn't like that's not the reality like the people are really lacking equipment and um, like for example um, they technically have webcam but the resolution is just so low that you just can't see the person or like if there is not like 100% optimal light, you just really can't um, figure out anything what's going on. And yeah, that's, um, um, it's, it's really very, it's, it seems obvious, but it is, is not. And I can just underline that this is really one of the core challenges um, to tackle along the way. Um, the next challenge to tackle is, like the um, work asynchronously um, aspect of virtual collaboration. So when you um, work virtually and distributed, um, and this is also not just a Corona time thing, you will notice that you, that the time zones, the F different person, uh, work in will change a little bit. So um, right now, for example, a lot of parents need to take care of their children. So they will work, try to work very early in the morning. Um, then they set up their, their kids. Uh, if they go to school already, they set them up, help them to get started into the school day. And um, then um, they they will want to have lunch with their kids and in the afternoon they, they need to support them again. And so the parents will have like another work um, work batch of work in the in the afternoon, and and just this creates the feeling of like people working in different time zones. Because if you want to find time for a meeting or a call, it's becoming more like really more and more hard, and and work processes are shifting towards uh, asynchronous work. And um, yeah, this is um, also just something which can be um, made visible very well in a, in, a, um, in a team agreement. And I've actually seen this once uh, and I really loved it. So it was basically like a, a timetable um, put into Confluence and um, it, it was, it, it looked like a shift table in a restaurant, but it actually was just people's um, availabilities throughout the week, um, depending on if their kids had soccer practice or um, if they needed to bring them to a, a certain, um, certain dentist um, or whatever. And it was, um, it was just um, 
it was something obviously you can do and they did as well in Outlook, but just to get this overview and make people understand why your schedule is like that um, was just really helpful to get the understanding of everybody. And um, yeah, the, um, then there is another challenge uh, which a lot of people um, are struggling with and that's like to establish a balanced and healthy work-life flow. And um, yeah, that's um, a very individual challenge. Very often like the, the company or the organization or the team can just set like a, a frame, but it's something everybody needs to, to work on. So it's, um, I, I kind of, it, it's, it's super important, but I didn't want to put too much um, emphasis on this here. Okay. So um, that's, uh, that's my presentation. Thanks everybody for uh, listening and um, being part of this webinar. And if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer them or to go into a discussion now. So I have just more practical uh, question rather than uh, related to your presentation. How are you doing with that, all the tax offices and so on? Because our company is currently also thinking about going fully remote and mm -hmm. how you are doing that with the le all the legal stuff and so on. So you have a partnership with some outsourcing company that has an office in every country or? Okay, so um, Avalox is really small. We only operate in Germany, which really um, helps a lot. So um, we, um, do have some clients um, who are way bigger and who are also um, trying to work remotely as as like much as possible and usually like legal the legal department is kind of the boundary so the like they, they have documents um, which are super important and which shouldn't or mustn't be stored at somebody's home or um and, and usually like the the legal people are um the people who still stay in the office although um we have our we have like a an a lawyer uh, of course ourselves and i recently talked to them and uh, they said that like they there's still, especially in Germany, there's still um, a long way to go to to make it possible um, to do like to collaborate on everything, which is con like concerning the legal aspects digitally. But there has been recently some improvements. So, for example, they don't need to send mail for everything, and there's like a platform which they which they use to um, communicate with the courts and with like um, authorities and. Um, I can just imagine that there's probably other countries where this is way more advanced and where maybe even um, um, legal things can be handled online. But it's it's from my point, like from my perception, and that's like I'm not a big expert on like digital collaboration for lawyers, but that's still um, an extra an extra challenge in Germany, as far as I know. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying because overall everybody's saying, oh, let's go to switch like to remote, like you said, but then remote means we can work remote, but every of us has to be in the same country where the company is based. So what kind of remote mm -hmm. work is that? So it's yeah. like just fiction of like the same like in USA, you can work remotely, but you need to be in USA. So that, that that's what I'm experience right now and now the countries don't know how to solve that problem and so on the companies also so i've seen some solutions and i maybe was wondering if your company has like some work around for that or not but if you are most based on in germany then there is not the mm. case so um some of our some of my colleagues have been abroad and they have been working from abroad but only very limited time very limited times and um, as far as I know, like if, if you're, you know, like if your main, uh, I don't want to go down into legal stuff, but too much, 
but um, it's it's really only possible temporarily to leave from my from my perception of Germany and work somewhere else, but for your company in Germany. But um, that's still, from my point of view, like an improvement to how it used to be. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Um, question from my side. Um, what, if any, role does the office still play? Is there still part for the, is there still a role for the office in remote work? Is it something like, I don't know, the tribal home where everybody can come back to? Or mm. I don't know. Very important question, actually. I didn't mention that too much in the, in the presentation. So first, people still need to meet. That's like, that was the research shows. Like you should, that's why, okay, I'm, I pointed out in the scenarios a little bit, but even like international distributed companies and teams should plan on meeting once in a while to just, um, yeah, get the people still to know each other, you know, like to um, forge some, some connection. And also there's, of course, um, very critical stuff to talk about sometimes. And if you can do that, co-locate it, that's just better than, than doing it um, at, um, virtually. But and you don't need an office for that. Sorry, you don't need an office for yeah. that. You could, that in, yeah. you could do that in a hotel conference room, for example. Exactly. Exactly. You couldn't do this anywhere, but um, especially if you're um, locally distributed. So if it's not um, too problematic for your company to meet together, um, you should still try to meet um, regularly. So like there's there, I think you, everybody needs to, to think about where he's more, he or she is more productive and what kind of tasks can be done better at which place. And, um, and there's, uh, for some companies, um, especially like if the people don't need to commute very far, it might be still reasonable to have an office where people can meet very, um, very um, easily and where they can do pair programming or where, where they can just um, do short meetings where they don't need to like rent a room in a co-working space. Um, and of what you already also mentioned, like the, the home aspect can be important. So if a, if a company always, um, like the employees felt like that the office was a kind of a second home and they really liked being there. And it was also like a great place to socialize. Um, that might be very important too. So to that the office is not like to um, to get work done, but to to socialize among the colleagues. But um, very much likely, like offices will change. Like they're, they're um, like we've recently seen a lot of cases where um, offices, like the everybody has this has his desk and or her desk and uh, and a place to sit and and work there the, this concept is is disappearing and workplaces become more flexible and more multi-purpose and and more and useful in an agile way i i have to look it up again but ibm tried tried something similar or started something similar in the 90s already where they basically said nobody has their own desk. Mm. Uh, you get to the office, you pick a desk, and that's your desk for the day. Mm. Um, result was um, people made arrangements that they had arrived at the same time so that they could sit close together. Mm -hmm. uh, people, people did the same thing like on the beach. So basically they put a towel on the desk <laughs> um, and kind of reserve that desk. This is my desk. And um, I have to look that study up. I guess it was in Harvard Business Review or somewhere. And then, and mm. then uh, in some locations, some unspoken rules um, emerged, like this is Jörg's desk. So uh, nobody sits there because Jörg sits there. And if he doesn't get that desk, he's very unhappy. So mm. stuff like that happened. Um, and then there are, of course, a lot of people who cannot work at home uh, because they do not have the space because renting that space in a city like Berlin or in Frankfurt, which is even worse, 
uh, costs a fortune. So if you don't want to be with both elbows on the wall, you need a few square meters uh, and that's very expensive, renting or buying. Um, mm. So my question is, and I, I'm, I was wondering if you had discussion within digital teams or with, with clients or other mm. people involved um, uh, in that project. So what I read is that the workforce, even the knowledge worker workforce is split in the middle. So there are 50% who say I can work at home till the end of time and 50% who say, no, I need an office. I need a space because I do not have the space at home or for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I was wondering if you had discussions with your clients about what does that mean for capacity planning in an office? Mm -hmm. So currently you say, well, you get a standard desk, you get a standard chair. Uh, I need such and such amount of meeting space and, and common space for the number of people in the office. Um, and that's X square meters per person mm. and X uh, Y square meters in total. So, yeah. uh, and, and not only, I mean, that's the problem right now, not only the office will change, but how much office do you need? Mm. There are no contracts around. If you rent 5,000 square meters or whatever, you cannot come the next day and say, well, I would need like to have a hundred square meters more and tomorrow I need 500 square meters less. Nobody's doing that. Mm. So, uh, and co-working spaces are horribly expensive in comparison. Mm. Uh, so I yeah. was wondering if you had any discussions about that. So yeah. what does it mean? Hmm? Yeah, so, so first thing, I'm really glad that you pointed out that it's really not an easy situation. It's really a complex thing in every company, even small companies. You, you ask one person and they have another preference than the next one. And, and that's, that's why I just really want to underline that every company really needs to learn from what, where they are and where they want to go to and what is important for them because there's really no, no blueprint. Um, but for uh, capacity planning, so um, so I, just a few concepts I can share. So first, um, even in these like I book a table concepts, um, I've heard from from a company that they they have a colleague um, who still like they have a locker. And in these companies, you need to book a table, but you have a locker, and every every morning that person just like takes a big basket out of their locker and puts like all like personal stuff on their desk um like you know pictures and maybe um a certain cup or whatever uh, maybe i don't know even a, a plant i don't know I, I didn't go that much into detail but they really cr um, um yeah kind of made that flex desk their um their, their personal desk and um, so that should be okay too. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily think it hurts anybody if that desk would be designated as Jörg's desk. Like um, hopefully the interior architect did a good job and it's not like by far the best desk around. Um, and um, so, but generally we experience companies to be a bit more flexible. So like to, first of course like to gather data on how many people are seeing themselves coming to the office how many people like how and then how many days um, because as you pointed out some people just need an office space they need um, they can't work at home because they have small children and they can't focus um, at home because they don't have any, any working space or they don't don't have a space for a real desk and um, it would be ergonomically and an issue for them to, to work at home because they just don't really have the space. And on the other hand side, there you have people which are really happy to not come into the office um, more than once a week because they need to commute two hours um, every way. And, uh, and with that data, um, people usually um, do like a capacity planning, which is way low, like which results in way less space being needed than everybody gets a desk. And, 
Um, but the range is incredible. Like some people have um, some some fixed desk scenarios, like where people who really say, "I want to come into the office every day, except for once a month," and uh, they get a fixed desk. But usually, then there is a kind of a rule attached. You know, you need to need to be in the office uh, four days a week, approximately, to uh, to to get a fixed desk. But if you are in the office four days a week, you get a you get it. You you are eligible if you want to. And um, and um, yeah, it's it's just a very variable um, concept. Also, um, people or companies tend to um, to um, go for interior building models where they can redesign space very, very quickly. So the, um, they can change the purpose of space um, very quickly. And um, yeah, sometimes like it, they also combine models. Um, so they, they, they get office space and then they get some flex space in a, in a, in a co-working space nearby. Or for example, they don't need, don't have so much meeting rooms. And if they need to do a lot of meetings, they can just rent meeting rooms from a co-working space who is a couple of minutes away. It's just really, it depends a lot on the individual situations, but we can, we, we can certainly say that there's a lot of creativity happening right now and a lot of flexible solutions um, emerging. Yeah. Does this help you? I know it's a very... I, I, I would really like to see somebody who does that successfully. Uh, mm. And I would like to see somebody who does that successfully who doesn't have money to burn, like, let's say, Amazon, mm. because they don't mm. give a shit. They built their own tower. Uh, and they can give everybody their own floor if it's if it's if it's useful because they don't care. Everybody else who has to work for their money and pay taxes, uh, which mm. they also do not do, for them it's just a cost issue. In the middle of Berlin, you do not pay less than twenty five euros per square meter per month cold mm. for office space. So there's actually not a lot of flexibility. Five hundred square meters more is two, 3,000 euros rent more a month uh, and real estate mm. contracts are not that flexible. So, mm. um, and the, the current problem, the current additional issue is that for the time being, so let's say I'm the pessimist uh, for at least a year, there will be some sort of uh, physical distancing or at least um, protection against transmission via air. So yeah. um, I, I even read an, art, read an article in the Washington Post who, where somebody wrote that the cubicle is coming back. So these gray things that in matrix and everything, because actually they are perfect. They're, you cannot spit on everybody, anyone. You are in your own small cubicle thingy um, and you can make it out of mm. glass or plexiglass, but still you are socially distant and airborne transmission is not an issue. So, um, and uh, I have in the family, my, my brother is a manager in an industrial company. Um, and for them, they have 1,200 employees on site, uh, production and office space and everything. And that's a really big issue. And there's um, working from home is an option, but especially if you have an industrial production next door where people from the office have to be and see something, yeah, that becomes even more of a challenge because you cannot have some robot with a webcam rolling into the production and uh, then have a discussion with that remote worker via webcam or something like that. So. Um, I see a lot of issues here and, and, and it sounds all very nice, um, but maybe I've been a, a manager too long and, and uh, think too much about money. Um, but let's say from an organizational perspective, uh, not from a cultural perspective, from a cultural perspective, I see the, th I, I hear the things you say and, and, and I agree completely, but from an organizational perspective, how do I keep that in a range where it is, um, economically affordable and sustainable uh, while being culturally supportive of the workforce. That's, that's 
I would really like to see somebody who solved that successfully. But from, mm -hmm. for example, from, for, from our perspective, so mm -hmm. it all depends on the income. If your income didn't drop, so you had that in business yeah. plan that you can spend that money for office even if it's empty. So for us, it's not a big deal, especially maybe eBay is a wrong, uh, wrong example because we are fully in the e-world. So, yeah. so, so we were not impacted even better. So we get a b best result so in that last years because people started to buy everything on the our pages and so yeah. on but we're still paying fully for our 3000 people office in berlin which is close and probably will be close up to the end of the year because mm -hmm. it's funny fact we have a brand new floor planning but the floor planning was done that the distance between people are one meter 30 centimeters <laughs> so <laughs> okay. so you're missing 20 centimeters or something. exactly exactly okay. so we can't go back to the office because there is no distance that uh, that healthcare system will allow us and yeah. and they are thinking now what to do every second person and how about canteen and so on so they said that it's easier to just close it yeah. and pay no, I, I would really like to hear also from Atlassian uh, in Sydney because they just announced that they are going to build this brand spanking new hybrid timber office yeah. tower thingy. Uh, and then three weeks later, they announced, well, ac actually, everybody can stay at home and work from home indefinitely. That's really interesting, yeah? So um, is that uh, I want my tower so that I can sit on top of my tower and I don't care who else is in the building <laughs> as, long, as long as I'm on top. Um, but I would really like to talk to somebody at Atlassian how they want to manage their real estate and their offices. And also in Amsterdam, they, they just rented a new office as far as I know, and the old one was far too small mm -hmm. um, and they had to move and everything. So, um, and Atlassian is also not poor. They are making money like crazy. But um, I would really like to see an example where somebody um, solved that challenge successfully. Or has a plan. But again, it's not a, a, a little bit for Atlas and avoiding taxes and so on, like spending money on investment in the real estate and so on. Who knows? I, I mean, exactly. like everybody else, they don't pay taxes. So, yeah. So the problem is for the small companies. Yeah, yeah. I would say that when they, the most important is if you lost the income, then you are really in bad situation. Yeah. And then you have, of course. No. Yeah. So I, I think the, I mean, like the situation right now, um, people, there, there's really no, not even best practices really, because it never happened before, like the whole Corona situation. And I just, um, I also, you said you would like to see somebody who does, does it successfully and who is like in a, in a rather, um, you know, like in a, in a business where they, they, they can't like experiment too much. Um, and I just think that these these cases will emerge, but they just didn't happen yet because there was no need. You know, like the whole yeah. the re whole remote uh, dis discussion is just really like the, the, there's the coronavirus is like really fuel in this whole on this whole topic, and um, there's there are just not a lot of best practices. On this yet i mean there are small companies like a commode in berlin mm. um yeah they are um like a digital they, they produce an app basically a service but they are also like 100 distributed and um there's other some other small companies who did this before corona happened and i think um yeah that um companies will just really learn by themselves like some how to to yeah. handle this and treat this differently and i don't but on, honestly like i'm not a real like an office renting expert but probably mm. even even the um like office space providers need to change um how to how how they operate because um, yeah, if everybody starts working from home, which is not possible, but like if a lot of people start working from home, they also need to rethink their their model and maybe become more flexible. But this is really like a big change and with a lot of 
things where nobody knows right now what's going to happen. So um, another question, let's step outside of the office for a second. So you are at work mm -hmm. and um, a big part of the office is actually not the office itself, but the, the infrastructure around the office. So mm -hmm. having lunch together outside of the office or going somewhere to have a cup of coffee. So, so much happens because the office is in the middle of the town or in the middle of the city and there's an infrastructure around, around it that allows social interaction. Um, and, and remote work doesn't give you that. That's, that's mm. missing remote work. So you could meet for a cup of coffee, but it's not like you receive a guest and then you say, hey, that was a nice meeting. Let's go downstairs, have a beer, and we can discuss the rest during the year and whatnot. Or mm -hmm. uh, this, this salesperson question, um, did you have lunch already? Maybe we could just continue this at lunch, which is the mm -hmm. happy salesperson end of meeting suggestion. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've done sales longer than I care to remember. So that, um, and you can't do that with remote workers. So is that, is that something, how do you compensate for that? So um, like even, even during the recent times, um, I had some meetings and um, I just really think that's that like the one, like 100% remote work without go meeting um, partners or colleagues at all is, is really only feasible for a couple of jobs and um and for a couple of companies um so i think for for most knowledge workers in germany there will still be a mix of like seeing people going into the office one day and um but but on the other hand side like i also really have good experiences with like talking to um people um like on in a, in a web session, like with have a with having like a virtual coffee. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of seeing other people eating, so I'm not the biggest <laughs> fan of like virtual okay. lunches, to be honest. But like if you um, if you make an appointment, if you if you meet um, to um, for a virtual coffee or like a virtual beer, that can sometimes also be a good solution. But it really depends on on the people. But for example, like in a in a sales meeting where you are uh, where you're up for a decision if you want to go into a um, in a partnership with with that person on and their company or not I think that will still be a thing where people would want to meet for but they would meet for it maybe once and not like yeah. regularly like you know they they would meet this other pe person once in, 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 in person have, have lunch and then maybe um, have the other conversations um, digitally. Hmm. And I, I'm, I'm wondering how that will change business or certain types of business. I mean, um, it's, it's not so, I mean, you have that in Berlin as well, but London is a better example. If you go to London and you're somewhere in the city and, and meeting a, I don't know, uh, at a high-end consulting firm or at a high-end accounting firm or whatever, um, the location of the office and the office itself is designed to impress you as a customer. Mm. So here is a powerful company that has a thousand of the sharpest minds that only work for me. And that's why it's right next to Tower Bridge or whatever. So... Mm. And you have that in every business that the office is, or, or like Atlassian's new tower that they are building, this mm -hmm. hybrid timber thing. This, it's, it's, it's a symbol for the company. It's innovation. It's green. It's, it's the future. It's, it's flexible, blah, whatnot. So the physical office has, a, has a, also a cultural um, component in very large companies. Or if you look at the... Mm -hmm. At, at campuses, like, like look at Apple's headquarter. No? That's, that's a symbol. That's not a, it's not so much an office. It's, a, it's really something that a symbol of this company. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and um, I don't know if we are going to lose that. 
and how much that will and and I I guess there are a lot of people working at Apple who like to go to this office if they don't run into the doors because everything is all cloth and glass but really like to go into that office because they so that they can tell at home I'm working in Cupertino whatever mm -hmm. so or I'm working in Silicon Valley which is because by proxy this prestige reflects on you I don't mm. know if that, if that's is that an, is that a part is that something that you saw with with yep. larger clients yeah. or whatever yeah uh, so uh, people might be proud of their their office um, I mean like the the people we met um, in the research project they weren't so much about it being um, <laughs> you know like prestigious but or prestigious but more like a place where they really like to hang out and where they, they liked, you know, like a lot of people actually like their colleagues a lot and they, they like to meet them and hang, hang out for a coffee with them and have a beer with them. Mm. And, um, and that's, that's really something which is one of the bigger challenges behind remote work to get that, you know, like if you, if you only meet once a year, for example, if that's like where you end up, like how you fill the space in between is really like a, um, a, f um, a big challenge from my point of view, which nobody has solved like perfectly so far. Mm. Okay. And, but on the other hand side, I've actually met people who are really um, proud of their social internet. And um, actually like the, the people I met who said that, it was a confluence social internet um, so we're back at the back at that lesson um, but you know like the I think that this becomes more and more important that like the digital tools um, that um, you collaborate with with your colleagues become cool you know that they need to also spark at least some joy and um, kind of replace um, the office as a place where you meet people where you read and hear about cool stuff um i think mm. i really think this is becoming more like the the second home thing which the office provides if that's lost or if this is the relevance is re re reduced that's becoming more and more important in your digital office okay. digital so, workplace. so that that that's what i'm what's trying to get at that uh, if you really decide to to have remote work uh, it's not not just saving money with less office space. You have to really invest into the digital equivalent of a nice office. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to have a nice digital environment. And that's not mm -hmm. something that you can do just in passing. You have, in, have to invest in that. Not only yeah. licenses and stuff, but that is a people business. So do you have to have somebody who organizes that, who... Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, a story from my life, I, I once had the privilege uh, to, to meet Bell Labs when Bell Labs was still Bell Labs and belonged to Lucent in New Jersey. And that was very impressive and uh, forget the laboratories and everything and the campus that they had there, which is very nice. But uh, what they had is they had somebody who has had nothing else to do than um, running through the building and asking people, what do you need? What's mm. your problem? Uh, so they were just facilitating. They knew everybody, everybody knew them. Um, and I don't know, some chemist uh, needs a physicist that has experience with, I don't know, uh, high voltage lasers or whatever. So um, then that facilitator knows somebody who knows somebody who knows a physicist who, and, and organizes, facilitates meeting or gets stuff for them. So I would say it, uh, a really, really nice remote working environment needs a human facilitation, um, especially if it's larger than let's say 20 people or whatever. Um, or if you break this score boundary, this 120 people that you can know, you need people who facilitate and that mm -hmm. costs money in some yeah. way. You know? It's not just having a nice chat room. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. 
like the it, it's the, the the analogy is actually perfect like you need to keep your ni oh, nice office nice you need like people who facility managers and janitors and if you want to keep your digital office nice you need um facility managers and digital janitors. you know like it's 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 really yeah and they need to they need a budget they need be to be able to to work together with partners because they don't know everything by themselves you know like nobody in a if your roof breaks in a in an office building you would never try to fix it yourself yeah and that so, so that's that's not just a help desk you cannot solve that by by uh, open a ticket and service desk you have to have somebody with a face um, yeah. that is available and that people can talk to or just talk to, uh, mm. whatever, like you would do in an office. You have an assistant, you have a janitor and you can stop by and talk about stuff you know, mm. sometimes. So, so um, yeah. I would say that that's something that's missing from the whole discussion, um, that people need to invest and that needs training. It's, it, that's not something that people can do just mm. uh hey you are responsible for the intranet uh you it guy over there no? yeah, yeah but that's that's a different role it's not just keeping the intranet going so mm -hmm. something else so i think the what i really like um is if you uh, perceive like the the like the digital workplace and the di like depending on the size of your company the different solutions within it um, as products or as services, which is which are just like not sold to the outside world, but sold internally. You like you know need to, so you get into this user-driven mindset. You um, you try to um, provide these services to the users, like you would provide an external, like a pro your product or your like your external um, external services to external users. And um, I really like the idea of like having a product owner um, being really responsible and trying to maximize the user value, and um, you know like working with with working with business cases because very often you can also it's not just um, for it to be nice but it's actually like saves you like improving a digital collaboration within your company very often saves you a lot of money as well. Yeah, but but. I have to disagree because that's a bit sterile. I mean, it's that's um, uh, the wrong vocabulary for that, in my opinion. Um, because um, in a good running company of a certain size, um, it's important to have an eye on people you are working with so that everybody looks after everybody else in some way, shape or form. So uh, if you see somebody sitting in the office till half past nine in the evening, uh, you see that three times, the fourth time you have to say, well, what's wrong? What's the problem? Mm. Too much to do? Don't, do you don't want, don't have a home anymore? Trouble at home? What's the problem? Why are you here at half past nine? Um, you shouldn't be. So, um, and as you said at the beginning, you have to give up managing the work, the, the, the day of your, of your workforce, and you have to work asynchronously because the biorhythm of everybody is different. But still, you have to fulfill this function that people can look after each other mm. like they would in a, in a good, good well-functioning team and in a well-functioning work environment. Um, and that is very hard in, in a remote working environment. And it's, uh, having somebody like a, a product owner for a certain service is too sterile for that function. Because that is, that, is, that is not a service. That is something like um, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, let's say, in a, in, a, in a place where humans meet in real, in the reality, um, that happens as a, as a social function. But in a remote, uh, you have to build something like that. You cannot just, um, that's difficult to do. You have to have, um, yeah. So my statement was just, basically pointed to the digital, like to the tool side, yeah. to the internal, to the digital workplace side, but you're absolutely right that you need to organize like leadership differently and like roles, which might need, might feel that it's like, as you said, like agile coaches, scrum masters, kind of some kind of facilitator, 
um, it's it's you like the the individual people usually take over more responsibility by themselves, but this is also not it's not um, there needs to be some guidance and also like you know like um, having like maintaining a healthy work life flow to yep. at least some extent is also just something which is like really important and it must not get lost somewhere in between you know it's like um there i think i think there will still um or there will always be some kind of leaders because like there's naturally leaders in a company because the company is usually owned by uh, by somebody um and and if they decide to delegate this kind of leadership where you need to look for your employees yeah there will be always people who have this role and if it's not traditional managers anymore, it might be other roles, but um, these roles need to be filled. Yeah, because, because the people that I'm hearing now um, arguing for home office, I can stay at home forever or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm mostly like software developers or operations people. Mm -hmm. and I love them. I have worked with them all my life, but those two types of people on average do not like other people anyway. So um, they could have happily worked in front of a computer as their only social interaction from the beginning. And they are of course happy with, with, uh, with remote office. So, um, but uh, a lot of people, and, and it, but now it's going into other businesses as well. So Allianz announced, for example, that they want to have the insurance business that they want 40% of their people at home by next year in the home office on a permanent basis. And that's a totally different business, totally different people. Mm. Um, and um, I don't know if, um, if the current discussion is, is too much, how shall I put that? Too much um, tailored towards we are developing and operating a cloud service or an app or whatever. So we are developing uh, and, 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 and running intangible goods, preferably software and operate it without customer contact in the cloud. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and those companies, of course, they have no problem whatsoever. None. Uh, they have to keep their people happy, but most of these people are used to looking at a screen all day. Um, those 2% who have heard the word mob programming or pair programming or whatever, notwithstanding, and you can do pair and mob programming online very nicely and most developers know how to. But all those other people who are also knowledge workers, but not necessarily elect, uh, working in a digital sphere like insurance mm -hmm. people, whatever, German word is Sachbearbeiter, you know, which mm. is something that you can do from home. And, and we have mm. more of them than we have developers. I'm always thinking the current discussion is too much tailored to these digital software developing folks like myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not sure. Yeah, kind of digital natives in general, yeah. like yeah. people working in the ag marketing agencies and stuff. So I have this perception as well but on the other side i also know some cases where like for example call centers are operating with a lot of home office um in their let's say workplace mix and i just think it like there are cases uh, where this works as well and where this is like um a big um where this, these concepts work successfully and uh, generally i think the what is very important there, or what is at least my perception is, that the, um, um, the attention from the management shifts from time being invested to results being achieved. So, um, like, you know, that you that you like that you don't manage time of of your employees. But you you manage the tasks and, and the priorities, and if they if they just need um, if they are super quick and and they get it done in, in thirty five, that's that's fine basically. Then it's and if they 
if they need longer, then you just try to support them and, and try to figure out um, what is maybe special about their situation and why they need longer. And if you can support them to, to get it done quicker. And then I think that's, I mean, that's, that's true also like for development jobs or for other jobs, mm. but um, like this approach going away from time more to us results, this is very important there. That sounds very nice. Um, yeah. And Atlassian also had this outcome oriented pay that they want to introduce. Um, but um, people have fought and bled for a hundred years to have the same pay for the same work. Uh, and this outcome oriented pay is something that makes me uncomfortable, mm. especially in a relationship where one side holds most of the power mm. and can decide what an outcome is, how valuable that outcome is. And you are just not in the same negotiating position. And again, mm. most software developers that I know would say, hey, I am in a strong negotiating position because without me, that app wouldn't work. Perfect. But uh, there are millions of other people who have, do not have that negotiating position. And this whole going away from uh, a simple understandable metric that, that defines your pay and everybody gets paid the same for the same work hit towards very fuzzy, very asymmetrical definition of pay makes me personally uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. And mm. I, that, that's maybe because my, my father is, is a labor union member of, of, and has been, a, um, I've, been, I've grew up in a household with, uh, where labor unions and everything was uh, part of everyday life because everybody was in the union, even I was in the union. Didn't have to mm. be, but I, had to, but I was. So I am, I am very uncomfortable with that. So I, I, I don't see where that goes because the intention may be benign, but the results could be horrible. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy that um, in Germany we have um, like, you know, like co considering the whole world like employer friendly uh, legislation and that we have strong unions and um, I, I'm not voting for like not looking at the, the working time anymore. It's more like, um, you know, that um, when you, when you want to talk about something, when you, it, it, even it's not so much about like who achieves more. It's more about like in an environment where usually there's so much stuff to do that you just prioritize the work and just like um, talk about the results and how, how they, they've been achieved and what you learn from achieving them. And, and just, um, um, you know, don't manage the time of your, your employees. Because I think this is really like, I, I don't know, when you were talking about um, um, Sachbearbeiter or like mm. call center agent jobs, I just... I just think this is very important that they, um, that you, that, that you have these solutions which scale. And I think then, you know, like they, there's not a, if they, if they don't, if they are not able to achieve certain results, you shouldn't like blame them or um, um, yeah. punish them or something. You should just work with them and, and maybe you figure out that they are working on special cases which are just super hard to to work on and then you can just improve the whole process on taking care of these cases you know that's that's more where i'm i'm leading to i mean like it's a i'm kind of painting like an ideal world here I, i'm no i'm <laughs> but um i think this is more like the mental approach um which yeah. um, should be um um, taken into consideration when when establishing like remote working models for um, other kinds of knowledge workers. Yeah, but um, in my pessimistic world view, ninety nine percent of the world still functions based on greed. Mm. And like Gordon Gecko said, greed works. Greed is good. So um, and. 
that makes this these things very difficult from my perspective. I I don't know. I see I, I see the potential, but um, mm. there's also a lot of potential for abuse. Mm. Uh, absolutely. I mean, like it's usually also just when something changes you and you change it because you want to address certain challenges. Um, you can be sure that there are new challenges waiting along the way um, mm. or at the end. Um, and um, you, you know, like the idea is just that the new challenges are less severe than the old ones. And um, I think, um, you know, like, um, so for example, um, yeah, there's a lot, uh, there's a big discussion about like how, um, how, how people can achieve a good work life flow when working remotely. But on the other hand side, like the average German commutes something like 45 minutes a day. Yeah. And if for the people who, um, who can save like three times 45 minutes a week, it's like a big gain already. And, you know, this is like one challenge which, which can be solved. You also like the whole rent thing. That's also actually like an idea of digital teams that, you know, like if people can work remotely more, like, you know, for, for the jobs where it's feasible and for the companies where it's feasible, they don't need to move to the big city to have, to have a job they like. They can just work from anywhere in the countryside. And, um, okay. you know, if there's internet, but um, I mean, like, um, like there's actually like, I think there's, um, there's fiber. What's, well, I don't know the English term, but there's fast internet yeah, in more fiber. villages yeah. from my perception. But you know, Philip, that's uh, exactly what a lot of my friends did. So they, when they switched to remote, they moved to the countryside because they they they, they didn't like the huge cities and so on. And that they they mm -hmm. of course you can buy for the same amount as a flat in the city. You can buy a nice house with huge garden in the countryside and populate the region mm -hmm. which is not populated and so mm -hmm. on. So I see that move already in my neighborhood of the IT specialist. So yeah, mm, and I, yeah. I, I also think about maybe doing that like that. So so I hope that eBay will also switch to fully remote and then I, I, I would like to move to the countryside or maybe not to the countryside, like 10, 20 kilometers out of the city and I don't need to commute like two hours every day. And also the interesting stuff about the automotive now because do I need a second car right now if I will work fully remotely? So my cars are standing for the last five months like in front of my window. They stole mirrors already because it's not used what the heck <laughs> yeah we Our shall challenges. see yeah right. we shall see challenges enough yeah. yeah and and also i can see like of course i i i, I have a flat like a little bit bigger where i can have my office but i save a lot of the on the commuting like especially time but also money gasoline and so on cards like mm. it's like two three hundred euros so it's not a small money yeah yeah mm. okay i would say those were nice closing remarks mm -hmm. yeah we will see what the future will bring yeah so thanks again philip for being here thank tonight. you again for... thank so, you very much good evening Thank you. Good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Dankeschön.